Welcome to day 330 of our visa journey. I'm Ed Krasenstein here with my twin brother, Brian. And remember these videos are being sponsored by NFT Tech. They are an investor in CloudFeed, the mobile DSO app. Yeah. So, so yesterday, Dharmesh updated his game Wordplay. Of course, you can check out Wordplay by going to wordplay.com. They also have a DSO account at Wordplay. So if you're familiar with Wordle, it can be it can be kind of annoying when you get you when you start typing in a word and you you want to you want to visualize like what could what the next word could possibly be like for example you know there it, the word starts with a d and ends in a t but you don't know the letters don't you don't know the letters in between so you have to type you 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 could type d x x x t that's what I do when I play Wordle so that I can kind of visualize what it looks like. But then you have the X's there and it kind of makes it a little confusing. So with wordplay, what you can do is you can type a space. So you could type D space, 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 T. And then it's going to show question marks in those empty spaces so you can better visualize it so that you can be like, okay, what could the next three letters be? And I don't, Brian, I don't think actually donut might work. I think donut would work. That was a, that was a good guess, but yeah. Anyhow, it's it's a great feature. I think you know Wordle could probably take some advice from Darmesh and do this in their own game. Yeah, and and, and I love the fact that he's integrating DSO. Uh, it's not like fully integrated where everything is on DSO, but the fact that you can share your uh, your scores on DSO, it, it's just it's it's just nice to see that. Yeah, definitely. So it looks like the. This anniversary is going to be the last weekend of March. It hasn't been confirmed yet, but according to the poll that Matreshka posted, it sure looks like the last week of March is going to be the one that the DSO anniversary resides in. Uh, what's really cool is that it's going to lead right up to the NFT LA event, which is also in LA. So people who come fly in for the DSO event Will also be able to go to the NFTLA event if they wish. Yeah, and uh, Ed and I are going to be there for sure. Um, we're talking to the entire NFTZ team, so the Van Halen brothers, all three of them are going to actually try to fly in from Europe, uh, the Netherlands and uh, Spain, and meet up there as well, and maybe stick around for NFTs LA a little bit, uh, give some publicity to uh, DSO there, and of course NFTZ. But uh, it should be a really good time. I'm really looking forward to meeting a lot of people. It should be a, a lot of people I think are going to be coming. I, I'd say it's going to be close to 100 people, uh, just guessing based on the replies that we've seen. But since this is coinciding with NFTs LA, it kind of provides an avenue for a lot of DSO people to actually take part in that as well. And maybe spread the word, wear your DSO t-shirts and hats and whatever. Yeah, for sure. And we get to meet some NFT artists, maybe. Uh, so also yesterday, Ty Fisher added a really cool website. You want to talk about that, Brian? Yeah, so docs.deso.org. Uh, it has a lot of documentation about Deso, but he added a page to that so that users and possible users can go there and see all the projects and nodes that are being built on the Deso blockchain, which I think is important. Uh, Rand here helped him out. Uh, got the list together for Ty. Uh, the list might not be 100% complete. They said that if you want to add one, please contact him and Ty and, and you can add one. Uh, I think it's important that people are aware of all the projects and nodes. And, and I've said this once and I'll say it again, I think there should be some sort of plugin for nodes that are running on DSO so that they can like put this plugin on their site. So maybe it's like a sidebar plugin where it lists all the active nodes by maybe transaction volume. So that if you are on Diamond app, you also see that there's a NFTZ and there's a Polygram and that there's a DSocial world and Supernovas. And you can quickly click to get there and you can actually explore, I think what, what DSO is all about. And that is about having these various nodes that are pushing information to the blockchain, pulling information from the blockchain and all working in unison together. Yeah, I, I, think that's, I think that's a good idea, having that little app that you could put, little plugin app that you could put on your site too. I love that idea. Uh, 
yesterday Kanchi had a big clubhouse room, Brian. Yeah, so uh, we had Kanchi on, of course, yesterday. Uh, brilliant guy. Uh, he's doing this Astronation Metaverse uh, that's functioning with DSO. And yesterday he actually auctioned off uh, four Pathfinder NFTs that are basically claims to the sky for the metaverse that he's building at Astronation. And these, th th this auction was live on Clubhouse. Um, four of these sold. They were all, I think, over four DSO, some around five DSO. Uh, that it was one of the more active NFT auctions I've seen over the course of the last like six weeks or so. Things have been kind of slow. Uh, there was a lot of bidding. We tried bidding on bidding on two of them, didn't win. Uh, I know there were there are a lot of really really cool features to Astronation that I'm excited about. Um, I know that Tobias Schmid won one of the Pathfinder NFTs, Deso Chats, uh, Bitboss, and uh, Hindsight Profit. All four of them won one of the Pathfinder NFTs. So they're going to have a claim to the sky in this metaverse, and they're going to be a build their build this uh, starship of sorts. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that progresses. Uh, Kanchi's doing an amazing job along with Slava as well. Yeah, so I, I, I want to see how, how it comes out too. I think it's going to be awesome. Uh, also yesterday, Illuminati, Illuminati, the creator of Rowdy Reptilians. As some of us know, he decided to create an Ethereum-based NFT called Childish Bambinos. And he had begun minting these. He minted, I believe, seven of them or so. Three of them, I think, have sold. On Ethereum, on the Ethereum blockchain, they're available on OpenSea. And he made a post yesterday, though, saying that if this post gets 100 reactions, I'll burn childish Bambinos on the Ethereum blockchain and mint them here on DSO. And he got, he, as of this video, he has over 130 or so reactions on that post. So it looks like Tyler Bambino is going to be burned on Ethereum and be brought over to DSO, which is going to be awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, and and I just want to say a couple of things about this. Uh, Chris is one of the OGs here. Uh, he deserves a ton of credit because he's done so much for DSO for the DSO community. Uh, some people gave him some flack for saying, "Hey, I'm going to I'm going to make some I'm going to mint some NFTs on Ethereum." Uh, you you can't do that. I, the the guy has been here. He, for, for months and months and months uh, boosting DSO. Right now we have a slow period on DSO when it comes to NFTs. Uh, I think it's gonna pick up soon. Uh, I know there's a lot going on behind the scenes within the NFT space, uh, but he's gotta earn a living and, and he quit his job to, to follow this dream of producing NFTs on, on DSO. So I, I think give him some give him some slack here, uh, even if he did decide to go, go on and and mint on Ethereum, which it appears that he's going to bring back, come back to DSO. So way to go, Chris. Uh, but yeah, shut up, brutal. <laughs> yeah, brutal. Stop being so brutal. But yeah, yeah. I, I mean, he deserves to be able to kind of dictate what he's going to do with his time. And and I think when there are slow periods on one chain, it makes sense to try out other chains and, and see what happens. Uh, I'm guessing that within the next 12 months, things are going to pick up here on DSO significantly, and there's not going to be reason to go to any other chains. Well, but, well uh, additionally, I think we're going to see all NFT marketplaces kind of integrate. You know, like we're probably right. going to see DSO NFTs on OpenSea at some point. We're going to see the DSO marketplaces integrate with other chains. You know, you're going to be able to probably buy and sell Ethereum NFTs on the on NFTZ, on Supernovas, on Polygram. So eventually that's all going to come. I, I mean, there's no reason not to expect that. So I, I think, I think and it, the future of NFTs aren't, it's going to be multi-chain. And I think eventually DSO is going to be one of those chains that, you know, gains steam. Like we've, we're seeing with Solana now. Solana is becoming a big NFT blockchain. And I think the same is going to happen with DSO. It's going to take time. People have to trust it people have to you know discover it know about people discover yeah. it and, like, yeah and and like ed said i i think that there, there's a few things going for DSO that i think make it significantly uh a significantly better more efficient chain than others when it comes to nfts and of course that's the basically free minting uh and i think the fact that the minting on one 
platform like say you mint on supernovas that nft is going to be displayed on every other node so i, I think that's important it's going to be displayed on polygram nftz diamond app BitCloud. you have multiple marketplaces and i think finally there are the social aspects that are going to be slightly are going to start to be integrated into a lot of these platforms to allow for a more social experience and and i i think that I, I think that right now we're looking for a breakout artist from another chain to come to DSO in order to maybe maybe boost it and, and spread awareness. But Chris is actually somebody that never minted on another chain, started out on DSO, made a name for himself on DSO, and then decided to try some try it on another chain. So I, I think you just got to give him some slack. Uh, the guy is amazing. Uh, he's great. He's a great artist. Um, that's all I have to say, I think. I don't think too many people were complaining, Brian. I think you're exaggerating that a bit. You can't consider anything that Brutal says to be legitimate. Sorry, Brutal. I, I, I mean, I guess some things you say are legitimate, but when you attack people, uh, I think you just got to take it with a grain of salt. I'm sure Brutal is probably going to attack me now. But don't be okay. brutal. Don't be too brutal, Brutal. <laughs> All right, so moving on. Um, the top earners from the last 24 hours on Open Prosper, Brian. What's going on there? Yeah, I, I like doing this every few days uh, just to get a feel for what's happening. There are a total of 1,225 creators who actually earned some DSO in the last 24 hours. 14 of them earned at least one DSO, which is about $43 or so, the last I checked. But the top, the top 10 earners uh, in the last 24 hours were uh, Astro Nation, of course, Conchi and Slava's project where uh, they're building this metaverse that I talked about earlier. They earned $851 selling the four NFTs. Uh, so that was an average of, of about 4.3 DSO per NFT or so, I think. Maybe I'm slightly off. Uh, Punks to the People uh, earned $556. Seals earned $367. Then there was uh, Purgatorio, Service, Venom, uh, Unicat, Love Big Mac, Clout Women Unite, and Ugly Ass. So that's the rounding out the top 10. So congrats to all of you for earning some DSO. Yeah, congratulations. And there's only one community event today that I'm aware of, uh, or I guess I should say that Miss Katie Ann's aware of, since I get it from her list. Um, it's the 12 p.m. Eastern Time Clubhouse Room, IT Clubhouse, Decibel, DSO, Altum Base. Tun Place, it's a Russian language room with Siva, Fankur, Mashalin, Simek Ilya, and Fedorovic. So definitely check those rooms out, check that room out, especially if you're a Russian speaker, or if you want to learn Russian. And everybody have a great weekend, and we will talk to you tomorrow. I love you, Brutal. <laughs>